Hey, <laughs> good night, good evening, whatever. <laughs> All right, um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit. Um, <laughs> it's so crazy. Yesterday, it was 70 something out. I washed my car, worked in the yard. <laughs> Today, there's snow on the ground. Not kidding. <laughs> It's snow. Um, look, um, there's just so many things going on right now. Everybody's freaking out. No one seems to really know exactly what this thing is. You know, I've seen videos from virologists and biological experts and all this crap from our country saying there's no way this thing was... Uh, Natural occurring, no way, the way it bonds to the cells. And then you got RFB out there saying it's just a fake, it's just a cold, they're just blowing that out of proportion. And I think he's right in a lot of ways. I think he's right because I think if you're healthy, you can recover. But then I've seen the other videos saying young people are dying too. And then I've seen the stuff about 5G. Is it possible that what they were spraying in the air, the strontium, barium, aluminum, and all that, is just something that helps the 5G travel faster and then you're breathing it in? You know, it's micronized particulates, you know, and you know it causes dementia and Alzheimer's and all kinds of other issues. And you got the bees dying and birds dying and fish dying. And is that the EMF frequencies going through the water and going through the air? and and it's flowing better because of what the meticulates they were spraying in the atmosphere that apparently causes flu-like symptoms when your body's trying to expel it. Or is it some type of biological weapon that got away? I mean, man, does anybody really know the truth? We're being fed so much confusion. One thing's for sure, for sure, without a doubt. God's in control. God's in control of everything. Everything. God's in charge. And um, and I, man, I, I look, I'm a sinner just like everybody else, but I do notice that I have sinned less and less over the years, thank God. But then you know, maturing and really studying his word more. And then when when he starts to really fill you up and you can hear him, you know, those those Things that want you to sin, those things that draw your flesh, get less and less and less. Thank God. <laughs> Along with age, I think, as well. I'm not doing stupid things anymore. But, uh, but yeah, that definitely comes from God. And your whole life is directed. Like, the path you walked in your particular life, God is constantly calling you through different events in your life, in my life, in everybody's life, so that no one has an excuse. Nobody. We've all been called by God. And like I said, it's a gift. You can't go to church and just sit there and listen to people or listen to them on the radio or a TV program. Look, most of what we're getting is just tickling your ears, making you feel good. This is why the Bible says it's for no private interpretation. You know, if that didn't mean that it's for no one privately to try to interpret it, that means it's for no one group of people or anyone else trying to tell you what it says. Look, if you go back to Genesis 1, you go to verse 26, 27, 28, for yourself, for yourself, and take every single word back to its root, back to through the Strong's Concordance, right? Uh, look at its meaning. You'll see it. You'll see it. And then look at Genesis 2. From like verse 4 all the way down to verse 7. And you take every word back to the original language. Especially where it says the Lord God. I understand they used Elohim for God in that. But they preceded it by the word Lord. Which makes all the difference in the world. It means the one in charge of. The one who created. The owner of. The Elohim. The angels. 
And I understand, I, I got in a conversation. Look, it's just so weird, the conversations you have with people. Look, back in the, was it the 90s, early 90s, I, I lived in California. And I was working on a job site. Um, and there's, there's things that happen. Anyways, I was going to smoke some weed with a guy in his van after work. But my wife at the time was uh, pregnant. And I started thinking to myself, thinking, thinking, man, I should be getting home to my wife right now. I shouldn't be doing this after work. You know, and I started thinking, what would Jesus think about this? You know, and as soon as I said that, that guy I was in the van with, he made the sign of the cross and flipped me off and said, F you, Christ lover. Now, I was with the other person in the van. He saw nothing. He saw nothing. And I've had these type of experiences throughout my life with other people as well. You know, when you're born again, you can see things from a different aspect. You can see spiritual things. And, it, and, it, and as I've grown older, I, I've been able to recognize that more and more and be able to see it. It's like that veil is lifted. And I'm no one special. I'm not. But I started studying the Bible way back in the 80s. I wanted to know the truth. You know, I joined the Marine Corps. And that makes, and I had a lot of time on guard duty. That makes you kind of think of your mortality a little bit. So I wanted to know the truth. And it's been a long journey. And then I ran across JK, you know, several years ago. And he taught me how to study the Bible using the Strong's. Take every single word for yourself back to its original language. And I was doing that. And man, it's like the whole thing just blossomed, just opened up. So all the people out there, all you Christians out there who aren't really looking, I mean, look at Genesis 126, 127, 128 for yourself. You can't, these, our pastors and stuff in church, um, they, they've been tickling our ears. Um, they might take a word here and there back to the original language and they'll say they're doing that, but they're not teaching you to do it. You need to do it for yourself. It's a free gift from God. And if you're not interested in doing it for yourself, you're missing out. Um, and like Jake, you know, man, and I've been seeing it for a long time, even before I ran across JK's channel. I could see the symbols like Josh Sparrow's pointing out. Does a great job doing that. Great job. Way to go, Josh. Love you, man. He's doing a great job. And uh, Mark, um, with the final hour uh, series. I mean, he does a really great job too. And so many others, so many others. I mean, you can see it all around you. I used to see it in movies and see the message and the Holy Spirit's revealing messages through commercials and movies and, and billboards and signs and clothing. And I used to see things not as good as JK does. I mean, he's an artist and he has a really strong spiritual gift there. Um, but, man, since so many of you out there and him too have pointed out things, I see, I mean, I see stuff everywhere, everywhere. And I can, and then people, man, conversations you have with people at work or, or even at home or even when you go out to the mall or go out to dinner, things people say, signs they make, gestures you make. And here's the funny part. And it's not funny, really. These people don't even know they're doing it. They don't even know it. They don't even realize they're doing these things. They're being led by a spirit. And over the years, especially over the last year or two, I've really noticed it. And I mean, this is beyond just like someone growling or hissing at you, which has happened. I mean, and, and just the, the um, animosity, the anger is increasing. Um, you can see, and like, you know, they're both, they're starting to turn this way. Instead of being double-minded, like part in this world, and, oh, I go to church, I'm good, I'm all right, or I think the scale, my good will outweigh the bad. You know, instead of like being double-minded like that, now they're both pointing down. You know, they're, they're totally connected. And things are getting worse. 
you talk to some people and it's like a, just a blank stare goes over their face. But some people, there's still some people receptive. There's still a few receptive. So keep it up. Keep up the good work. Uh, run that race. Run that race. Let's finish strong because we're in the end game here. We are in the end. And the delusion uh, is getting way, way strong. And if you can't see that the mark of the beast is coming, we will have to be vaccinated. We will have to be tested. We will have to be vaccinated. And it will be attached to either like a Band-Aid type electronic tattoo boop, they put on you and peel off and it sticks the vaccine in you. And I've seen things from people saying that they, they've actually got chemicals that can block off and, and I don't know how many doses, might be just one dose, certain parts of your brain. And they know certain parts of your brain light up when you're studying the Bible and praying. Okay, and other parts when people who don't believe the Bible and hear scripture, they get disgusted by it and turned off and a different part of their brain will light up. I mean, look, man, <laughs> the advancement in scientists is way beyond anything you can imagine, way beyond. So could this vaccine have something to do with that as well? It's possible. Maybe that's why you're irredeemable after you get it. You know, you have to understand what your bodies are. It's a vessel, it's a vain show, a shadowy figure, a phantom image, such as an idol. That's what it says in Genesis 1.26. If you bothered it for yourself to take the words back to the original language. Look, just all the scriptures will open up once you understand that. And I understand that they use that word H430, which is Elohim for God in multiple places throughout the Bible. But if you know it's talking about angels and not really the Lord God, but if it's preceded by Lord, then it very well probably does mean the most high God. But if it's not, most likely, well, it's talking about angels and really look into that verse and take every word back to the original language and you'll see it and you're going to get a whole different understanding of it. Everything comes more clear. This world belongs to Satan. This world right here belongs to Satan for a time, for a time period. And this was done to purify God's kingdom. He gave his children all free will. We screwed up. He knew we were going to screw up. And he came here and saved us, provided a way back home. You can't let your own pride and your own knowledge get in the way. You can't. Otherwise, you belong to him. And that's just the way it is. If you take, this mark of the beast is coming. There's no way around it. And I hope and pray to God that we're raptured out of here before they start knocking on doors, taking people away by force with militarized police or the National Guard or troops or whatever they use to do that. Look, we all have to prepare our hearts, our hearts and our minds to reality, to the truth. It's a spiritual world and it's being played out in this physical world. It's a separation of the sheep and the goats, the sheep that follow Christ willingly. We know he is God in the flesh. We know he is the Lord, the almighty, the creator of everything, all life, every kind of being, everything that there is, all life, all plants, all trees, everything, and submit your will to his will. That's why we're sheep. That's why we're sheep. And we can hear his voice. He'll speak to us through his word. But if you never bother to study it for yourself, you'll never see it. You'll never get it. If you're just listening to pastors and preachers and people on TV and radio programs, you'll never see it for yourself. That's probably why you don't believe what I'm saying and what many other people are telling you. Look, your flesh, it's no good. This body, this flesh. And look, and I'm not saying people are bad. Like, I, I said something to some people like, I get disgusted. I get disgusted by it now. And that's the way the Lord feels. I guarantee it. No doubt about it. When I can see these spiritual aspect of how they're being influenced. 
by things they do or say or act. And look, I sin, my flesh will still rise up. I'll get angry about stuff or, or too emotional about certain things. You know, a lot about those things I get really emotional about because it, it makes me angry in a way to see someone who's, I, I can see the spiritual side where they're connected and where they're coming from. And it, and it, and it angers me and it disgusts me. But it's not the person. I mean, I love everybody. I understand it's a spiritual side of things. And it's not that person. Like that guy in that construction site back in the 90s I was working with, even though he did that, I liked that guy. I did. But I understood there was a spiritual entity either inside of him, he was possessed by, or influencing him. I understand that. And I liked the guy. You know, he was a good worker. Um, and many people that I run across, it's not that I don't like them. I don't like the spiritual thing they're connected to or being influenced by. I can feel it. I can see it. And when you're born again, you can too. Um, and as you mature, you become a ripened fruit. You begin to see it more and more. And these end days we're in right now. The end days we're in right now. It's becoming really, really obvious the difference. And like I said, it's not the people. It's a spiritual battle. So pray. Pray hard, Christians. We've been taken away from gathering together and praying together, um, which sends out good frequency, good vibes everywhere in this world. And they're preventing us from doing it. And uh, still we can do it in our homes. They're preventing us from gathering though. Um, it, this is time. I just hope everybody sees it. I hope everybody can see it. Um, and like I said, I, I was talking to a guy at work today and uh, he, he's a good guy and I love him, but he never heard anything. I told him, I said, you gotta, you gotta, when you study your Bible, you have to use Strong's Concordance, take things back to the original language. Get a Bible that has a thesaurus or um, download my, my Bible, my sword, my Bible. There's all kinds of e-sword. There's all kinds of programs you can download and study for yourself. So um, do it. If you haven't done it, do it. So you can see for yourself. You have to see for yourself. It's like, it's like the Matrix, man. You have to see it for yourself to believe it. And pray for God to reveal the truth. Tell him you want to know the truth. You want to know the truth. We've been taught crap, BS, brainwashed since the day we were born about everything. Everything. <laughs> There's a lot of truth though. Truth mixed in with lies. It's time to go home. He's about to take his first fruit harvest. And you can see it, man. I believe the power is going to go down. God's wrath is going to be poured out on this world. You don't want to be left here, and I don't want anybody. I love everybody, all my family, all my children. You know, and and when I you know, and when I say that, that includes a whole lot of people, a whole lot of people, children of other people that I love. Um, so much so, I'd lay my life down in a heartbeat without a without hesitation, without hesitation. And I understand what my body is. I understand that completely. He's showed me. He's revealed it to me. I've seen it for myself multiple times. Look at the scriptures I'm going through. He repeats itself over and over and over and over. Man, I really hope you guys do this and study on your own so you can see it. It's all throughout the Bible. You can understand all the stories, how it relates, Babylon, Egypt, the flood, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, the Pharisees and Sadducees, how they relate to everything that's going on. Read the letters to the churches, the seven churches at the beginning of Revelations. You just understand everything so much better. In Revelations, you'll understand better taking every word back to its original language. You'll get a much clearer picture of what's happening there. We haven't been taught the truth. And I'm saying it doesn't change the story of the Bible. Jesus Christ is God. He says first and last and only representative. He is the Alpha and Omega. And uh, we thought we could be like him. And that's part of the reason we're stuck in a body right now. But it was a lie. 
was a lie. <laughs> realize that, realize that. I want to see everybody in heaven, everybody I love, and everybody that, you know, and I love everybody, like I said, that's Christ in me. I love everybody now. There's no one I hate, even if someone has animosity. I, I get it. I understand where they're coming from. I understand what's influencing them. And uh, like I said, it, it, my flesh will rise up every now and then too, especially in traffic. <laughs> so when someone doing something stupid in traffic, whew. <laughs> but, uh, but it's getting better. It's getting better. So anyways, there it is. God bless you. Have a great night. Um, love and respect to every, everybody. Everybody. Um, it's time. It's time. It's time to go home. It's time to go home and uh, understand that. Prepare your heart and mind. Understand what your bodies are and what this world is. It's time to go. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. And if you don't think so, then you don't quite know the truth. Sad. All right. God bless you. Have a great night. Bye.